The man behind this door has been condemned to seven years of imprisonment. Nobody knows the real name of the prisoner. When arrested in 1815 in Saint Malo for public drunkenness and vagabondage, he called himself Charles of Navarra. Later he introduced himself as Louis the Seventeenth, the son of the late King Louis the Sixteenth and Queen Marie Antoinette. After he had been recognized by one of the witnesses as Maturin Bruno, he appears in the files of the police under this name. Mockingly, his fellow prisoners like to call him Dauphin Bourbon. I'll call him the Pretender. Whoever he was, the Pretender created a sensation in France. He even created a following, which cultivated the belief that he was the legitimate heir to the throne. This is his amazing story. Locked up in the temple prison, the pretender says to be separated from his parents, Louis XVI and Marie Antoinette, and his sister Marie Therese. The Commune, the revolutionary government of Paris, assigns a private teacher to the Prince Royal. His name, Simon Antoine, a cobbler. This convinced Jacobin is required to erase all traces of his royal upbringing. He teaches him to behave like a revolutionary, using foul language and drinking alcohol. According to the pretender, royalists have smuggled him out of the temple prison in a laundry basket. After his escape from prison, he fled to America living among beggars and paupers last traces of royalty are wiped off as an impoverished man he returned to france thus told the story doesn't seem to be very plausible does it however nobody knows what really happened to louis the seventeenth Although a child had died in the temple prison, a proper identification of the deceased failed to appear. For years, royalists have claimed that Louis XVII escaped from prison. Moreover, the wife of Simon Antoine has declared that she had actually seen how the Dauphin was put into a laundry basket. The pretender becomes a celebrity. While under arrest, he writes his memoirs, the official account of the life of Louis the Seventeenth. He gives audiences to his ever-expanding following, and he even forms an alternative government. Although the kings who embodied the Restoration, Louis the Eighteenth and Charles the Tenth, both declare that Marturin Bruno is an impostor. Marie Therese is hesitant. If Bruno really is her brother, he has to be rehabilitated. To offer confidence, visit the pretender in secret, and they are amazed by his detailed knowledge of the royal family. Then the Duchess of Tourzel former governors at Versailles, is sent on a secret mission. After talking at length with the pretender, she is convinced that he is Louis the Seventeenth. Now Marie Therese is looking for conclusive evidence. She puts a list of seven questions together. She is convinced that only her brother can answer these questions. But the questions never reached the pretender. Somehow, somewhere, the letter is intercepted. On the 11th of February, 1818, 
The pretender is put on trial in Rouen. Again he creates a sensation. He storms into the courtroom like a caged animal. Using the most vulgar language, he offends the judge, the government minister and the guards. He ridicules his witnesses and the audience. The trial soon becomes a farce in which the pretender loses all his credibility. On the 19th of February, Mathurin Bruno is condemned to seven years of imprisonment. In Le Mont Saint-Michel prison, he gets confused. It's not long before the prisoner seems to have forgotten that he once claimed to be Louis the Seventeenth. Approaching senility, he dies four years later. <laughs>